so this is a 14 year old girl who came into um, uh, the doctor. Let me just skip up. She came to this outpatient clinic for psychotic symptoms, apparently associated with gluten. They didn't know for sure. And you can see after she had a fever, she became irritable and reported daily headaches and concentration difficulties. One month later, her symptoms got worse with severe headaches, sleep problems, and behavior alterations with a few crying spells and apathy. Uh, her school performance deteriorated. Uh, the mother noted uh, severe bad breath. Now there's a clinical clue right away. Something's going on in the digestive tract when you have severe bad breath, never suffered before. She was referred to a neuropsychiatric outpatient clinic where they diagnosed her with a conversion somatic disorder. Now that's kind of weird, you know, to a parent to hear that would scare their that scare them that their 14 year old daughter there was something really wrong here. Um, during her final exam, she had psychiatric symptoms and hallucinations, and she reported um, these hallucinations were indistinguishable from reality. And she saw people coming off the television to follow her and scare her. That's the perceived threat that Trudy was talking about at an extreme, but a perceived threat. Um, weight loss, about 5% of her weight and GI symptoms, such as bloating and severe constipation, and they admitted her to a psychiatric ward. It's a 12 year old girl. CT uh, of the brain was normal, EEG um, uh, was normal. Uh, they diagnosed an autoimmune encephalitis. They put her on steroids. Uh, these are pretty strong drugs they were using. Uh, for several months, she had repeat hospitalizations because of recurrence of these psychotic symptoms. This just all started out of the blue. This was a normal 12-year-old girl at first. Um, they did spinal cord magnetic resonance imaging. That's uh, MRIs of the brain and of the spinal cord. They did a lumbar puncture. They took some fluid out of her uh, spine and evaluated. It's all normal. Everything was normal. She had a mildly reduced level of iron storage. That's what ferritin is. Uh, and a little bit of a marker of inflammation in the gut, but nothing else was out of balance. They checked her for celiac. It was negative. Then she presented with severe abdominal pain, uh, difficulty speaking, slow speech, depression, distorted and paranoid thinking, suicidal ideation up to a pre-coma. And they gave her stronger second generation antipsychotic drugs, uh, but the symptoms persisted. By now she had lost 15% of her weight. So a nutritionist said, you know, why don't we just try a gluten-free diet? There's no evidence of celiac, but why don't we try? And her symptoms dramatically improved. And over the course of the next four months, she kept getting better and better. And here's a comment from the doctor. Uh, Until a few years ago, gluten-related disorders included only celiac and allergies. Therefore, our patient would have turned back home as a psychotic patient and received lifelong treatment with antipsychotic drugs. I mean, what was their future? What were they gonna do? They're just gonna keep her on these really strong drugs that would prevent her from having a normal life, right? but it was just a sensitivity to wheat. Due to parental choice, the girl did not consume gluten again and she complete regression of all of her symptoms. Nine months later, she's still gluten-free and she's symptom-free.